Hi guys, I'm Chris Munro. I'm coming at you from Glasgow City Centre. To the side of me is my favourite Indian restaurant, Charcoals. And today we're going to be in there interviewing, trying some of their food. So let's go inside and meet today's vlogger. Blogger meets blogger. Finally, I get to see you after what two years? It's been some time, yes. Uh -huh. Too long. Far, Need to catch up long. again. So obviously, you've seen what the whole series is about. I sit down, have a chat, we have a meal. Nothing scary. Yeah. Apart from what the gram. Uh, I don't know. We'll see, how, we'll see how scary it is. Yeah. What the gram? You don't know what I picked yet. No, no idea. <laughs> Uh, I can't wait to see what I've picked. Yeah. I've posted some strange pictures in the past. I, have, I agree, yes. <laughs> I agree, I agree. So obviously, tell everybody your name, your blog, and how they can reach you. I'm Stephen Morrison. Uh, my blog is www.howmanymiles.co.uk and you can reach me anytime on Instagram at howmanymiles underscore. Your sports, fitness and health? Yeah, my niche tends to be more fitness, sport, health, sports medicine. <laughs> cool. So, how long have you actually been blogging for? It's coming up to six years. Six? Yeah, wow. started in 2000, 2012. So, obviously I've seen... I met you two years ago, knew nothing about you, apart from you were into the sports site. And I started following you then, not like a stalker. <laughs> Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, st stalkers are welcome. <laughs> You're a great joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you say that. Um, so I've seen kind of like a transformation happening over the course of like your Instagram. Uh -huh. Um, there's a picture which I'm going to put up right now of what you used to look like. Okay. And obviously now people can see you now. Okay. So there is a big transformation. I, I don't know if that was the reason why you started. So tell us what was the main reason that you started doing the fitness blogging thing? That was it. And back in 2011, I, I would have struggled to fit in these two tables. I was 354 pounds uh, and I spent most of my time sitting at home eating. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw a picture of myself and uh, decided that I had to eat action. And I started the blog as a, as a newsletter on the work, really to keep myself accountable. It was to showcase what I was doing, what, what the what barriers I was facing, the successes I was having, mm -hmm. to try and keep myself going because I knew it would be a long term process. So obviously, hopefully you're able to hear us because it's starting to get a wee bit louder. I'll try my best in the video. Um, but what keeps you going, your motivation? Because if I say so, I tried running last year. Okay, I tried it. and are doing well as well. <laughs> it was interesting. I don't know if it's for me, which is why I kind of stopped. Um, running around once was interesting. With music it was better. I obviously didn't keep it up because it wasn't for me. So what is your key motivation? What really keeps you going at it? Because you are constantly doing a lot of stuff. It's fun. I try to have as much fun as possible. The back of my mind there's always a fear that the 354 pound me will return. Yeah. So that kind of motivates me. I do have celebrities. I mean, I, I put on a fair few pounds over the last couple of years for various reasons. Mm -hmm. But in the back of my mind, there's always that doubt that I'm always going to be the fat guy. And people say that being fat and obese has become, a, become a, a normal and uh, acceptable. If you're overweight, it really, really is. Mm -hmm. Well, you've done well. Don't be wrong, I have a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I try and promote that sport is, is for all, that no matter your age, your ability, your size or shape, there tends to be an activity out there that you can involved in and have fun doing. So obviously you're mentioning activities here. I've seen you running, I've seen you swimming, I've seen you throwing weights about a room. That video, that was that my <laughs> comment, that's how I tidy my bedroom. Um, you're walking, you're doing many different things. What is the one activity that you really enjoy doing? That's a good question, Chris. If you asked me a couple of years ago, 
I would have stayed at Lunan, was the sport that I loved the most. Mm-hmm. I was writing a blog for Great Run. I started a running group up. I was coaching a primary school how to run. Every day I was out running every weekend, I was out doing events. But now it's difficult to see what, what sport I love the most because at heart I'm a triathlete with a Y as opposed to, opposed to an I. Yeah, I like that, that um, thing when you say that. And I, 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 I love all sports <laughs> and to me it's about trying to mix you things. I've never, never become an expert in anything, I'm just enjoying as much as I can. Yeah, I don't really say this much to guys, but there's one picture I really, really like of you. And it's that one where you're running and it's are you doing the marathon? And you're really big, oh, cheesy smile on your that face. That was a nice 10k last year. That was amazing. That was a really good picture. And it showed how much you were enjoying it. it was, there's a story behind that. Is that I'd been, I'd been injured for over a year. Uh, and men's 10k approached me to to do some blogging, vlogging for them. Yeah. And it gave me a sort of kick on the backside to get back at running again. Mm-hmm. And my progress in sharing didn't go to plan. But I decided that I was doing that race. Yeah. So crossing that finishing line meant so much to me. Yeah, you could. It showed. It, they, say, <coughs> they say a picture, you know, a thousand words. Oh, it was sheer joy. That was like um, tons of thousands of words. I had made my return to running. Yeah. And it meant so much to me. Yeah. Right, so I've ordered onion badger. Um, you can get the price and the details from one of my blogs or the charcoal's website. I've never had this before. It looks really nice. I will tell you in a couple of seconds uh, what it's like and then we'll continue with the questions. My starter, I had onion with badgie, as you saw. It was really nice. I would have it again. Uh, Stephen, what did you have? I had chicken pakora. Chicken pakora. Very light batter, tender chicken, very, very nice. Have you ever been to charcoal before? I've been here a couple of times for meetings. Yeah. Uh, to meet Mohammed, uh, but never actually dined in it. Mm-hmm. First time for me and enjoyed it so far. Yeah. I used to come here with Chris nearly every week. Um, and then when I started the vlogging, I couldn't just keep coming back here doing the same restaurant. Granted, I know I've done that a few times recently. <laughs> Hands up. Um, but I had to go around, so that's one of the hardest things about being like, a food blogger for me. You can't go back to your favourite places because you need to try different or people get bored. But anyway, let's continue. So, what has been your most memorable event? You see events, you mean racing events or a boring gig? Anything but the, the one key moment in your starting to now that stands out massively. I think the thing the one thing I'm most proud of is writing blogs for the British Medical Journal. There's someone who's not a medic who's hit that level of prestige. Yeah. There's somebody who's recognised as being I wouldn't say an authority, but having insight and some experience in the areas that I work in uh, filled me with a lot of pride. That's good. And do you think you will keep doing what you're doing? Or do you think there will become a moment, you know, maybe in a year, two years you'll go, that's it? Well, I'm not getting any younger. I'm at least 45. So I don't know if there's older sports brothers than me, uh, but I doubt there are many. But the thing is, the thing I confess is that sport is for everyone, regardless of your age. <laughs> so I see no reason why I won't continue being a sports blogger. What I will say is, is I'm dipping my toes into travel blogging as well because quite often I go on holiday and my way of exploring a city is to walk around it, cycle around it, run around it. Mm-hmm. So I started writing blogs about my runs and foreign lands. Cool, no, I look forward to seeing them. I've got so much to read and so much to do. <laughs> I promise you I will sit down and actually read it. So obviously we're going to be having our main course um, and then for the Drink gram. Drink a or no, here we go. Yes, but before we do that, um, and before the food comes, so we can actually enjoy it, if there's anybody watching out there, doesn't matter what age they are, and they wanted to get into either the sports, the fitness, or the health, or a combination of all of them, what would your advice be to them? 
write from the heart, be true to yourself, and write about things that you're passionate about, things that make you want to write, and find, find activities that you enjoy, and find an audience who appreciate what you do, but identify who you're writing for, and, and be true to them. Remember that, that if you're a blogger, you're writing for those who read your blog, not necessarily those who are paying you to write blogs for them. Yes. Uh -huh. You've always got to be 100% honest. Yeah, I think, I think bloggers can sometimes wield a lot of power and a lot of influence. We are influencers after all. Yeah. And I think with that comes responsibility. Don't quote Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Do something so close to that. I, was, I, I know, I saw it. Coming <laughs> The geek loves the thin. Yeah, so if you want to quote it, go for it. No, it's okay. No, no, no. The moment is past. Okay. I think our, I know I'm cutting it short here, but I think our main courses are on its way. So we'll cut here, I'll show you what we're eating and then what the ground. We go. Okay. Cool. <laughs> you were so close. <laughs> So as you've just seen there, there's tons of in the table and more to come out. Um, I'm having butter chicken. I bought this uh, a good couple of weeks ago and fell in love with it. Normally I'd have korma. If you like korma, please do try it. It's butter chicken, check the menu. Peshwari naan, one of my favourites because it's very sweet. I like that sort of coconut taste to it. So I'm now going to try this. I've had it before, I know it's amazing. Uh, so we're all going to enjoy dinner and I'm not going to make Stephen wait anymore because he's a hungry boy. Um, so I'll see. We've just finished our main course. As you can see by the table, it's cleared. So we were that hungry, we ate the plates. Uh, how was your meal? Absolutely beautiful. Really, really, really nice. What was it your I had chicken. Don't tell my protein because they voted one of the UK's top vegan bloggers this year. Uh, so having chicken it got me kicked out of that group. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's the first chicken I've had in about four or five months. Well, you can blame me. I probably won't have it again for, for a long time. Yeah, anybody watching, it's all my fault. I apologise on his behalf. But now comes the time for what the gram. You've seen how this works. You don't know what pictures I've chosen. Um, I'm quite panicking about this. So this was uh, myself and Matt Miller of a company called Broga. Uh, and basically what it means is yoga for bros. Uh, I, I, Yoga is something I've always wanted to do, mm -hmm. but never got around to. I wasn't too sure about the meditation side of it, but I liked the idea of flexibility, of being more uh, supple. Yeah. So when Matt Miller launched Broga in the UK, I thought, why not try it? I'm a triathlete after all. Yeah. Uh, so I tried that with him. And how did you get on with that? Really good. Um, I always say that I don't do yoga because I'm inflexible, I'm old, I don't move well. And then I realised that that's all the reasons why I should do yoga. Mm -hmm. So it's been part of my life, so I quite enjoy it. Cool. Myself, my friend Paula, and her husband Jerry, mm -hmm. uh, we paid off Scotland last year. Last year, Paula and I were paid off Scotland ambassadors, something which I'm hoping to do again this year. Paid off Scotland is an event that's basically cycling from Glasgow to Edinburgh, 45 miles. But basically, anybody can do it. It's a fantastic event for the whole family. So if you see you posting about it, get involved. 45 miles. Cool. 45 miles, but you get little staging posts every 12 miles or so. You stop off for caramel logs and drinks and food and stuff. Oh, see, that sounds a wee bit more appealing now. Yeah. Your face mask. Well, I don't think you noticed this, but I'm currently sporting a rather uh, bushy beard. Yes. Um, I'm not much of a hipster, uh, but I stopped shaving last year just through pure, sheer laziness. Um, and then my girlfriend said to me, Oh, I quite like that. So I decided to keep it. And I let it grow for a while and it became quite unruly. So I decided to go to see a professional barber called Brush Barbers in the South Side, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and who's so there said to me, Oh, you're here, why don't we try a little bit of black face mask? And being a triathlete, I thought, 
let's try. Yeah. Um, and for a little bit of pamper, it was quite nice. See, guys can get pampered as well. Yeah, do something. I'm, I'm, I'm a feminist at heart, and I think that there's there's no gender discrimination. Mm-hmm. We should all do what we like. We do what we enjoy what we're doing. I think more guys are trying like more moisturisers, more I different things. That far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. We'll take. We'll stop there then. This is me uh, on a beach in in northern Scotland. Uh, it was windswept. It was cold, and I was just making my return to running. As part of the men's 10k uh, race, and I wasn't sure how I was going to do, and I said I'll do half a mile a mile. I didn't stop. By the end of it, I ran 5k, and I realised that this was me on the way back. Excellent. Yeah, I like the t-shirt. Yes, the men's 10k is a race for men of all abilities and. It's one of it's, it's actually my first blogging gig. When I first started writing for the my work, the men's team, men's team came along and asked me to blog for them, uh, and that was that was the, the main thing that got me started. So coming full cycle and coming back to them after these years it means a lot to me. It's good. So I've picked good pictures so far. Yeah, excellent pictures. Not not too scary in fact. Actually, I know. I told you nothing to worry about. So the next picture is you in a swimming pool with a big, big cheesy grin. What is this? Oh, this is a new one. This is quite relatively new. Yeah, um, so I thought I'd, I'd choose something. I spoke something. before about how running was the sport that I loved. Yeah. Uh, and then I hurt my knee and lost my confidence a little bit. I tried different sports and I cycled last year for Pelazumi. And this year I'm, I'm doing more swimming. Mm-hmm. Um, and swimming is an activity that we all did as kids. But so many of us give up and yeah. don't go back to the pool. And hand in my heart, I was not the best swimmer in the world. So I wanted to do a swimmer on 5k and I was worried about how I would do it. Uh, I was a breaststroker mm-hmm. uh, and my head was above the water at all times. My shoulder was getting sore. And I had the amazing experience of swimming with uh, Duncan Goodhue. Some older viewers may remember him. Mm-hmm. And Olympian Kerry Ann Payne, who was world champion open water swimmer, and they gave me some lessons in how to swim freestyle. And previously, I couldn't swim any more than 25 meters freestyle. And that was a, that picture was a couple of days after their coaching session where I swam 1375 meters nice. freestyle. Well done. So I was a little bit. Chuff with that. Yeah, no, it's a good picture. Yeah, I was happy. Uh-huh. I, I never thought I'd, I'd be able to swim that far. Uh, and I've actually upped that to two kilometres. I'm now swimming two kilometres. Mm-hmm. So I'm well on the way to swimming 5k in next month. Cool. That's something I've not done for a long time. Not well, not swim like 5k and everything. I actually swim. For Last me. time I must have been in an actual pool. Maybe when I was like 12 or something, high school. Yeah. So many of us. Uh, but as chill children we spend so much time in the pool and as adults we don't win and there are many barriers to get back into swimming and for me it was, it was confidence because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a bit away as well and I worried about walking to the, the pool what people would think mm-hmm. but in reality nobody cares nobody really like. gives a toss uh, just go out and they're enjoy too busy it. swimming themselves uh, or enjoying it and now that I'm back in the pool I feel relaxed uh, the weight's been taken off my shoulder um, and I just feel as if I just enjoy the calmness of being in the water. You're a water baby again. Yes, uh, more of a water whale I think. But, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. But I'll take that as a compliment. Cool, so the very last picture is you with that cheesy grin with the screaming. What's that all about? Whether you're a runner, a cyclist or any, any sport, in this day and age, the one thing you have to do is post your runs or cycles on Strava. Okay, what's that? Well, I love my watches. Garmin is probably, uh, I've probably spent more money in Garmin watches than, than anything that I have in my, in my possession. Um, and Strava is basically an online uh, program for, for recording your, your races and your runs. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it isn't recorded on Strava, it didn't happen. So what I discovered out my, my cycle was is that my battery had died. Oh. So I, I had no way of recording my run. Therefore, how could I prove I did it? Oh, that's a shame. And how, how, how did you do with the run? Was it? It was cycle, in fact. Uh, 
for me, cycling is a is my is a way I it's a way I get about. Mm-hmm. I will get a bus in tonight. If I'm going somewhere, I take a jump on my, my bike. So I'm always testing myself to see how fast I can go, uh, how many more calories I can burn, uh, how quickly I can get from A to B. So, in the days, you don't need gadgets to do anything. It's just a little bit extra fun. Yeah. Cool. Well. That's us for what the gram. Nothing too scary. No, I, I was uh, I was a bit worried about pictures we pick. Yeah. So I think you did make quite a, quite a few. A few so thank there. you for answering all those questions. Oh, it gives it a little bit more insight into why that picture was taken rather than just a couple of lines of text. People learn a wee bit more about you. One of the things I'm doing at the moment now is I, I don't think you're doing this yourself. Is I'm actually using more text and in, in Instagram. Before you post a picture in one line, yeah. now I'm actually doing paragraphs. Giving people just more insight into what we're actually doing and why we're doing it. That's coming. Yes, I've got a lot planned this year, so changes are coming. He's asking, he's on it. Yeah. I'm not just saying that. <laughs> anyway, before we finish up, I would like to thank Mohammed and Charcoal for allowing me to do this in here and for the food. And also, thank you, Stephen, no, thank you, for being part of my YouTube series. I uh, hope you've enjoyed today. Yes, the food was fantastic. The company was fabulous. Uh, and I hope that you'll have a look at my blog and, and hopefully I'll inspire you to become a true athlete along with myself. Cool. So before we go, final words, your name, your blog and how people can reach you. Hi, I'm Stephen Morrison, aka How Many Miles. And you can reach my blog at www.howmanymiles.com. Dot co. Dot uk and always reach out to me on Instagram and Twitter at how many miles underscore. Perfect, cool. So everybody, from me to you, thank you very much for joining me again, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.